if I think at this point, um, it's, uh, I keep saying Deftones, every question you ask me, so obviously tune into Deftones would be amazing. Uh, there's other bands I really enjoy out there these days, like Glass Cloud's a huge band um, that, I, that I really like these days, just their approach to how they do things I think is really unique. Um, you know, I've been getting into the, the newest Periphery album, I really like that one, Periphery 2 it's called. As far as the locations, I still, you know, I love touring in the States, we've done quite a bit of that in previous bands, um, there's some really good regions there, but I'd love to go back to Japan in a heartbeat, I think that's still my number one. Um, we were fortunate enough in Secret Whisper to play Loud Park there, and that's probably one of the most ridiculous experiences of my entire life, so as a dream, I, I would love to play that again, maybe play some club shows there, it's just such a, you know, welcoming and um, enthusiastic, you know, culture and group of people, they just love music regardless of what you wear, what kind of music you play, who you are, or where you're from, how big you are, any of that kind of stuff. So um, it's definitely a really cool demographic to play to. It would be really awesome to go over to Europe, haven't really gone. Dream tour, like fantasy tour? Mm. Well, definitely Deftones. Have to be open up for them. Uh, Glassjaw, Zayo, MXPX, and us touring Japan. Dream Tour. I think we're going to have to start with Blink-182. That's the reason I started playing music, as with so many other trillions of kids around the world. Um, Newfound Glory, Yellow Card, Jimmy World, probably throw in Mashuga in there, and Molly Crew, so they can teach us all not to be pansies in today's music scene and really have a party. Dream tour for me. Um, probably I'd love to tour with Let Live. I think that band would just go off live and be so fun to, to tour with. Uh, the Chariot would be up there for touring. Um, if I were to put like an all-time like historic tour together it would probably be Deftones, uh, every time I die in Glassjaw would be just an insane tour to be on. Uh, be more than glad to open up for all of those bands to play like one song for like nobody just to like walk off stage and have one anyone from that band just be like, you guys really killed it today. It's like cool. Yeah, we played for two people and no one came because we played right when the doors open. But thanks, that's fucking that made, means the world to me. So. Uh, Uh, I started playing music pretty young. I played piano for a good six years. Um, that wasn't entirely by choice, but I did it anyway, and I'm really happy that I, I did because um, you know that understanding of music kind of helps out with writing, sampling, and you know keyboard stuff and all that kind of junk. Um, but who really wanted me, uh, made me want to play drums when I started is I saw this movie called That Thing You Do, which is hilarious, but. Um, just kind of seeing that, I started getting infatuated with just drums in general and um, just the mechanics of it and just the skill of it and, and just watching drummers for some reason I just kind of kind of clicked with me. So I was always that guy who was air drumming or playing with chopsticks or whatever it is and um, pencil crayons and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, So from that point I was really interested. So the first opportunity that I, I got to play drums I took it. I was in grade 8 band class and I did the whole music comprehension test and they make you do a bunch of questions to recognize notes and all this kind of crap and um, I ended up getting perfect on my test so my band teacher's like, awesome, you can play whatever you want. And I'm like, great, and play drums. And he's like, that's really weird because you've really got understanding music. And I'm like, well, you know, it's just drums are kind of the enticing thing to me. So i uh, huge Buddy Rich fan, I still am, and I had this 1979 Montreal Jazz Festival VHS. Um, that I watched over and over again and just seeing the dynamics that, that he created and um, just the sheer just like technicality and and um, the performance side of it and all that kind of stuff like I was um, showing that really early on when I started playing drums um, so you know you could say I had the highest bar that was placed in front of me possible um, and that's something that's really made me want to you know progress and inspire me to kind of keep going so uh, I was pretty lucky, like my parents always like had music playing around the house, Beatles, Van Morrison was huge for me, and uh, my grandfather actually, he used to play the accordion, and some like my most fondest memories were like watching him 
sing for me and play the accordion. And um, that actually, I was always like really inspired by him. I thought it was like so sweet when you're six years old, you're like, my grandfather plays the accordion and um, fuck off, Dave. <laughs> uh, so for me, he, he actually had this old like, I don't remember what kind of guitar it was, but he let me use it. I think it was a pretty expensive one, but I must have thrashed the shit out of that thing play music and then um, he actually sold his accordion to buy me my first guitar which was like an old squire and I think my grandfather in general just made me want to play music and my parents were always really like cool with it my mom especially so um, but bands that actually wanted me to play music silver chair and I heard frog song and I that's all I wanted to do and I, I knew that they were 16 I was like I think I was 12 at the time I was like <laughs> Oh, I'll be there. I'll I'll be doing this when I'm 16, which I kind of was, but not in the same capacity. But that's another story. Basically, what made me want to play music was Blink 182. I wanted to be Mark Hoppus. I thought he was the coolest thing going, and 12-year-old Dave just wanted to play the bass. So I had a friend who had a guitar, and the first night I ever touched a guitar, we sat on, I think it was called guitartabs.cc or something like that, looking up Blink songs, and we figured out how to play um, a country union, or country song, and Family Reunion, they were the first two easiest little ones we could kind of pluck away at. I held off for a couple months, and asked my parents for a bass, and that was pretty much the end of any other hobbies that would have ever interested me for the rest of my life. Uh, I ended up switching over to guitar maybe about nine, ten months later. I got my first guitar when I was 14 uh, Christmas morning. It's a Fender Maxi Strat. Still got it. Um, kind of a ridiculous story about what made me want to play music, but I would say Probably when I was around eight or nine years old, I started watching much music and MTV. Uh, same as a lot of people growing up, when you're a young kid, you're not exposed to a ton of uh, different musical mediums. Uh, so I started watching Beavis and Butthead late at night when I was probably eight or nine years old. And uh, I was really big into grunge at an early age. And so like seven or eight years old, um, probably started listening to Smashing Pumpkins, Pearl Jam. A lot of bands that I really got into, but uh, then out of nowhere I watched a Beavis and Butthead episode and uh, saw Nirvana, and uh, I saw Kurt Cobain, and that was, so my first guitar subsequently wound up being uh, a shitty, like, uh, I don't know, like Mexican-made Fender Stratocaster Squire, like the, the old Squire Strat pack, that was my first guitar. I wanted a red and white guitar because I saw Kurt Cobain. At the time, I didn't even realize it was a you know, a Jags thing, or any type of hybrid guitar. I just saw Fender, Kurt Cobain, red and white guitar. I want that. Picked it up. I think the first song I ever learned was, I think it was Madman or Untitled by uh, Silverchair. And then I went through the typical, like, you know, everybody learns like Ender Sandman and all these basic songs, at least in, in, uh, in the generation that grew up in the early 90s. Um, so that made me really want to play music. I mean, I had posters, all the Nirvana records, and it was cool because it was rebellious and, you know, Kurt committed suicide, so no one wanted, parents didn't really want anyone listening to Nirvana, so it became this raw sort of punk rock badass band to listen to. So I would say that Kurt Cobain was my earliest influence um, as far as knowing that I wanted to play music. And then I went through this wave, obviously, where Dookie came out and Smash and, like, you know, 93, 94, when, you know, Pennywise and No Effects and Bad Religion and Mill and Colin and all these bands came out of like Southern California and you know the whole Fat Record wave and uh, an Epitaph wave kind of bowled me over and I knew for the rest of my life all I wanted to do was you know play power chords and sing about the shitty things in my life so it became a blast but Kurt Cobain's definitely the one that started it all.